Writing this speech took me far too much time because I've written the bloody epistle in rhyme. <laughs> and I'll start by admitting one thing if I can. When it comes to rap burns, I'm not really a fan. <laughs> you won't find me rushing to read Te Amus. I'd much rather sit down and read Dr. Zeus. But this isn't Zeus night, I say with chagrin. Tonight is called Burns Night, so strap yourselves in. I've got ten entire minutes of second rate verse. It's not written by Ravi, it's written by Burse. <laughs> like a hot pie from Greg's, you stuff straight in your gob. You'll get terrible burns from me, that is my job. <laughs> now, I'll keep the Scots light. For your delicate ears, I know burn sounds like this to my Sassanach peers. Ach, lachen and machen and chuchen and go, a hook and a chuchen and no, 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 no. You see, even to me, an old Scot with few manners, it sounds like a sick mule coughing up rusty spanners. <laughs> to anyone outside my homeland, burn's words make as much sense to you as a teacup of turds. <laughs> so the toast to the lassies, this speech that I'm doing. Traditional ones, folks have finished their chewing when folks are boozed up and the whiskey's in flow so that people don't care and their standards are low. <laughs> the content is focused on our fairer sex, who now aren't alone here and not wearing kecks. And ladies, to show my alliance with you, you've probably noticed I've grown moves too. <laughs> Throughout this poem, I'm trying to take care and not be too rude because my wife's over there. <laughs> and to talk of how Ravi Burns wrote about women. I won't go too deep now, I'll only be skimming. Most folks portray Ravi as some great romantic, but I'm not convinced. I'll be getting pedantic. The verses he wrote for these various women was probably just to get under their limit. Because <laughs> Ravi was Randy. A real naughty lad who struggled to keep it all under his plaid. The effort he put into crafting his words was often to just have his way with the birds. <laughs> his verse could be filthy, perverted and shady. A verse of his bragged, <clears throat> My men would please a lady. <laughs> I'm not sure if those inches were under his kilt, or if wee Rabbi Burns was more modestly built, but like the McDonald's that you and I know, he claims to have had a quarter pounder to go. <laughs> and he swung it around like the greatest of lovers, had twelve different children from five different mothers, no condoms these days as he humped through the glen. <laughs> So he spread STDs then again and again. <laughs> From Ayrshire to Erin to old Duke and Mearns, he left Lassie all screaming the words, All that burns! Our <laughs> <laughs> oh, a man from a long bygone age whose actions these days would cause grief and outrage. I'll admire his pen and his fine way with words without lauding the way that he treated the birds. <laughs> when Rab's thoughts weren't coming from under his sporing, resulting in more little children being born, <laughs> he wrote some fair poetry. That's beyond doubt. Although nobody knows what old Blank signs about. But being a bard isn't lucrative now. Peddling poems is not a cash cow. These days I think Rabbi would just be a bum or be doing a day job to boost his income. I'm imagining Rab as an ad copywriter, pulling a regular stressful all-nighter, rattling words with his delicate hands for some Philistine clients at corporate brands, who fuck with his pros because they think they know best, resulting in shite that's an absolute mess. We just don't see his genius, the bastards don't see Oh crap. I think he might be writing but me. <laughs> Damn it. In agency land, our old rabbi would fit in. He'd pick up awards for the ads that he'd written while badgering interns to lead them astray. I'd be glad this behavior wouldn't happen today. <laughs> in the workplace today, you'd get HR involved. Randy Rab is a problem that needs to be solved. Because when he's been drinking, he doesn't get sleepy. Instead, he gets handsy. Instead, he gets creepy. <laughs> 
He tells girls his love's like a red, red rose. So let's go back to yours, babe. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> the only thing Rose like for some wide-eyed chick is she might just end up with a bit of a prick. <laughs> the lover with all of his heart for one night or scurrying home to his wife before light. I'm not saying that Burns was a horrible rat. I'm just saying we're not more enlightened than that. <laughs> Let's get back to the topic of Ravi and women. We'll dive into his poetry now and start swimming. In the toast to the lassies, the regular banters, to mention the wife of the man, Tamas Shanter. While he's out in the piss till the wee hours of morn, she's a nurse in her wrath there to keep it all warm. And the speaker will say, that's a typical woman. But no, she was right. She's a reasonable human. Tamas Shanter, he sounds like a wanker to me. In the pub getting hammered with sport and TV, while she's at home caring for kids in the house, he's away gallivanting the miserable louse. <laughs> Women do far more work, and the stats, they all show it, that not much has changed, and the women all know it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> but facts just aren't funny. This verse is the proof, so I'll get back to knob gags and skirt round the truth. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, maybe I'm being far too hard on the barn. Take all that I've said now and please disregard. Because he was a man from a different age and some of the things that he put on the page were good for the time. And they're good for a quote. Let's ignore his behaviour and read what he wrote. He loved his wife dearly despite disrespect. And he wrote lovely verses. I'll quote him direct. Though cruel fate should bid us part, Far as the pole in line, her dear idea round my heart should tenderly entwine. Though mountains rise and deserts howl and oceans roar between, yet dearer than my deathless soul, I still would love my Jean. Another poem tells us more of lovely Jeannie, dear. I reign in Jeannie's bosom is the name of this one. <laughs> it is not Jean thy bonny face nor shape that I admire. Although thy beauty and thy grace might <laughs> well awake desire. <laughs> Something in Ilka part of thee to praise, to love, I find. But dear as is thy form to me, still dearer is thy mind. Those sentiments are lovely still, two hundred plus years on. I wonder if he brought them because of something that he'd done. Had she found out about his gallivanting round the nation? Was this verse like cheap carnations from a petrol station. <laughs> <laughs> and did it work to get back in her good books once again before taking a stiffy for a stroll around the glen? <laughs> again, again, I'm being unfair. I'm judging far too hard. It's the words and not the willy we should judge of this here bar. <laughs> so let me start to wrap this up with one of Rabbi's classics and move away from talking of what's underneath this cassette. <laughs> this poem that I'm going to read is one that I endorse. So let me now return to Burns and read it from the source. While Europe's eye is fixed on mighty things, the fate of empire and the fall of kings, while quacks of state must each produce his plan and even children lisp the rights of man amid this mighty fuss, just let me mention the rights of women merit some attention. 200 years and we've addressed that problem as you see and everyone has all the rights of straight white men like me. We're equal all with opportunity that's fair and true. Of course that's utter bollocks. We've a lot more work to do. Which is where I'd like to raise a glass to Ali and her school. She's changing people's lives from Ilfracoom to Olipool. And getting talent through the door of agencies galore, the kind of folks the industry would normally ignore. The Brixton Finishing School is making impact, class by class. So join me now in saying cheers. Please stand and raise your glass to the Brixton Finishing School. And sit again, because I'm not done. This to be honest, it's going on far longer than intended. <laughs> so let me try to wrap it up and tie it with a bow. I can see you're getting sleepy and I've still got bell to go. This poem was supposed to celebrate the fairer sex. So let me get to 
back to that unless anyone objects. For Ravi loved the women in his own outdated way, but my appreciation is from the viewpoint of today. To see the women here is fully equal, and that's final. Except for drinking Jaeger bombs and missing the urinal. <laughs> Most female leaders have a strength that men just seem to lack. They're not cursed with testosterone that holds male leaders back. For Finland and New Zealand show what female chiefs can do, this trust is the exception that you need to have. <laughs> so I'd like us all to celebrate the women here tonight to recognize their brains and skills, as it is only right. Before I hand this back to our most gracious female host, I ask you all to stand and raise a glass and give a toast to 